Over and over again, the Romantics stressed intense emotion as the, the, the keystone to human existence. Imagination, then, was intellect, reason, applied to that intense emotion. As Wordsworth suggested, most all poetry, or all poetry, is intense emotion recollected in tranquility. When you recollect that intense emotion, your reason applies itself to that emotion and puts it into art, into words, thus creating something new, making an imaginative creation. This poem very much embodies that. Again, part of the Lucy poems, and the speaker is looking back to those years when he first met this girl, this Lucy character, and he embodies in the poem the voice of nature, not necessarily God, it's the voice of nature. It's nature saying to him or to the world, what have you, that nature is going to construct this beautiful woman, this child, and construct this child such that the young lady is very much like the landscape around her, as beautiful as the stars in the British sky, as beautiful as the rolling hills, as colorful as the springtime in the trees, uh, as open and lovely and free as any landscape one can imagine. One is immediately thinking about the, the Lake District in England, where Wordsworth himself spent a great deal of time. Beautiful part of the world, open, free, rolling, green grass. And that Lake District he embodies in this poem, where nature says that it will make this young lady, a darling to both law and impulse. Law and impulse shared together, embodying this natural beauty in the girl. Uh, and nature says also that uh, the girl in rock and plain and earth and heaven and glade and bower will feel an overseeing power, right? So in other words, this girl's beauty will transcend all those natural beauties of rock and plain and earth and heaven. And yet all those things will also reflect her beauty. She will be one with the earth. There's a key concept of romantic thought, was that in the Enlightenment and in the Industrial Revolution, man had become out of tune with the world. Man was separated from the way he was supposed to be, which was natural. Here we have nature saying, I'm going to make a, a woman, a girl, who is almost like she's part of the nature itself. It's like she's emerged from the earth. And the Romantics held that as, as, as being the paragon of authentic emotion, authentic life. That we aren't separated from the world, we are rather uh, part of that natural world, part of that, that whole landscape. You see frequently the, the paintings of the time involve um, a great deal of landscape, open paintings, uh, open countryside, rocks, hills, lakes, that sort of thing. Prior to this, most painting had been about noble people, about the rich, the royals, the architecture. That was the subject matter of most painting. In this time of the Romantics, painting became open air environments. It became people in natural postures. Uh, frequently it showed scenes of great emotion and dynamism. And I think this is very much what this poem was about, too. It's a poem about this dynamic woman that the speaker loves, and she's part of the natural world. Notice it says she's as sportive as the fawn, right? Up and down mountain springs she goes, and yet she's also part of the silence, the calm, the, the mute insensate calm of the floating clouds. So she is, at the one hand, dynamic and virtuous, but she's also as calm and graceful as the willow tree. And she has the power and the glory of of the storms. So all those things that make nature most beautiful, the stars of midnight, for instance, are in her, are, are, are beautifully embodied in her. It's much like Byron's poem that we'll see later called She Walks in Beauty. This image of the woman, the beloved Lucy, is again not just the individual woman that the speaker loves, but the vision of the whole world as something beautiful and filled with light here in this, 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 this world that we live in, this happy dell that we live in. And then at the very last stanza, there's another reflection on what's going on. The speaker then 
has nature say it's, it's going to do all of this beautiful stuff? And the girl, of course, is made in such a way that she is one with nature. But then there's a certain sorrow or misery that comes to the speaker again, a sense that he's lost something because she's died, her race is run, and she has left behind nature, the heath, the quiet scene, the memory of what has been, but it, that memory will never be again. Nevermore will there be a woman like that woman. And consequently, the whole of the world is beautiful, charged with this light. But the main source of that light has been lost. <laughs>